Well, let's get more now on the nuclear power plant at Hinkley Point that's getting the green light. Uh, welcoming the news is the former Shadow Energy Minister and Chief Executive of the Nuclear Industry Association, Tom Greatrex. Uh, many thanks indeed for joining us this evening. Uh, critics are saying that there's very little new in this deal following the delay. What are your thoughts? Well, I think what that demonstrates is that the incoming new Prime Minister, new Chancellor, new uh, Energy and Industry Secretary said they wanted to have a look at the components of the deal. And despite all the noise and uh, all of the criticism around, once they've looked at that in detail, uh, have concluded that this is a good project for the UK. It's important to contribute to our low carbon energy supplies for the future, though in a way that complements other energy sources, that it's a good industrial project with a supply chain that will stretch into every part of the country and providing lots of jobs both when it's being constructed but then for the 50, 60, probably more years that it will be generating power and that actually we need this project and we need this power station to go ahead. So I take from the delay and what's the outcome of that, that that was really the government just checking over that and the new Prime Minister being satisfied and she has introduced and they have introduced some additional steps in relation to future projects and I think actually that's to be welcomed because it gives a sense of clarity for investors and for anybody who may wish to uh, seek to develop any future nuclear project that they know exactly where they stand and that can only be a good thing for investors because it gives us gives them confidence to be able to then go ahead and, and um, propose projects, finance them and get them delivered. There is a great deal of concern, isn't there, about security, about the Chinese being so heavily involved in our nuclear industry. Are you confident that this deal addresses that? Because many people aren't. Well, the any reactor design of from whatever country, whatever technology, has to go through the UK's independent, completely independent from government regulatory approval process. That's not a quick process, it's a thorough comprehensive uh, exercise that takes about four or five years and goes through all of these aspects in detail, not just the safety of the operation of a plant, but also issues uh, relation to, in relation to security uh, and around decommissioning, the whole range of issues, and they have to be completely satisfied before any reactor design gets its approval to then build and then that regulation is ongoing. So that exists already but what I think today has demonstrated is that there are additional areas where the government wants to be absolutely clear about ensuring that they are they're confident about the ownership of any important energy infrastructure. I think look that is important because it sets that clarity for people and that's uh, that's an important step out now to enable the investment in this and other future nuclear projects. OK, that's all well and good, but what about value for money? It's cost a fortune so far. It's going to cost uh, a fortune in the future. £92.50 per megawatt hour, uh, more than double the current market rate. Uh, some would argue that it should be funded by the British private sector rather than foreign investors who are going to take uh, millions and millions out of the country. Well, the, the price, the comparison with a wholesale price, actually if you're comparing to yesterday's wholesale price, Hinkley's £92.50 was well below. Uh, that reached about £160 a mega hour yesterday. Why, was, why did that happen? It's because there was high demand because it's very warm, there wasn't very much wind power, and that sort of indicates the problem we have and the need for that new capacity. And actually, uh, compared to offshore wind contracts signed at the same time at £140 and £150 a mega hour, the amount you're paying per unit of electricity is not, um, is not high by in relation to any other contract for difference. But what's important with this is that the price you should be comparing to is what the price will be from 10 years time for the 35 years that, um, that, the, that the strike price uh, is in place and it's the difference between the wholesale price and that strike price and if it goes above £92.50 as it did yesterday as it has done in the past in the last five years then money will come back to the consumer from EDF. What it does it sets a floor for the price that enables these long-term investments to happen because the thing about nuclear power and renewables is that there is low or very uh, or, or no fuel costs but there's capital cost to build the thing to start with and to deal with it afterwards but during the course of operation there's very little fuel cost. That's very different from gas-fired power stations which uh, more are cheaper and quicker to build but then you've got to factor in the gas price the fuel price and what we've seen in the last five years and we've seen historically is that gas prices go up and down that influences the power price if we want to have a balanced mix then we need nuclear as part of that to provide that low carbon reliable power but do it also in a way where we're not overexposed to the volatility you get in gas prices and, and fossil fuel prices in the market. But other options for low carbon electricity are getting cheaper and cheaper all the time, aren't they, as the technology develops? Shouldn't we be ploughing money into that rather than looking at, at, at this, what is uh, some think uh, uh, as old technology? Well, um, there are a range of different low carbon technologies, but there is not one that currently exists that gives you 
reliable, secure, constantly available electricity. And even at the lowest point of demand, there is still a significant demand for power. Um, and all of the contracts or difference that have been signed for whatever other technology there's been, the average price of those is well above the Hinkley price. So yes, prices, costs are coming down, but they're still high. They're high because there's a big capital cost, but then there's no fuel cost to deal with during that time. What we need is a balanced mix. There isn't a contradiction between renewables and nuclear. Actually, it's all part of how we get the best low carbon mix for the future. And that's about renewables. It's about nuclear. It's about managing demand more effectively. It's about storage when that develops fully. But we're nowhere near being able to do it without nuclear yet, unless we want to completely bust all our carbon commitments. And also nuclear provides a lot of energy on a relatively small site when you compare that to uh, how much land you will need for wind turbines or offshore wind turbines or the amount you'd need for solar on roofs. So you've got to get a balance and a mix between that. And actually, any serious energy commentator understands that you need a mix. Anyone who's suggesting you can do it from one single source of power are probably uh, people who advocate for that source of power but don't particularly understand the complexities of the market. We need to deal with the reality of where we are, the reality of the fact that between 2010 and 2030, two-thirds of our generation capacity will have gone offline. That needs to be replaced. That needs to be done in as low carbon a way as possible, but also ensures that we have a secure mix for the future. Nuclear is able to contribute to that alongside other technologies and today's news is a step forward to be actually being able to get on and develop that and, and ensure that we have that reliable supply that every household and every business in the UK needs. Mm. Okay, Tom Greatrex, former Shadow Energy Minister and CEO of the Nuclear Industry Association, thanks for your time. Thank you.